July 24, 2024. Allegedly, according to that thing we call a calendar, this is a Wednesday Ocelli effect. I'm not going to scream up and down. It's an emergency broadcast. The globalists have had a coup against America. I let AJ do that. He's been doing it for a couple of days. (laughs) What freaked him out? Well, I've got to say the dominoes of the past couple of weeks have been interesting. And, you know, I've been trying to hold back. Now, last night I was going to go live and do this and try and recap everything that has gone down because, quite frankly, it's been quick. I'm sick of uh, the conversations I'm having off air. The Friday night shows, I've got true believers in the GOP on there with me. But nobody, and I do mean nobody, uh, is you know is live along with me. So let me just see who the hell this is trying to ring a phone when I'm busy over here. Let's see. Hello. 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 Fucking. Anyways, excuse me, but. Jack Assery calling on the line that I shouldn't even leave plugged in. Anyways, back to it. I've had to uh, 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 take a step back because the silliness I'm getting from the true Trump believers is now matched. Okay, the 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 Trump sphere is big. It's huge. It is a thing. Uh, if you listen to the Friday shows, you've got the belief that it's okay to declare others evil because they're evil. And you don't have to take that seriously. If you're influential in any way, shape or form, you convince people that they are literally the seed of the devil and somebody goes after them. It's not your fault. Okay, I got it. It is the fault of the media, though, that they went after orange Jesus because somebody shot at him. Realistically, though, do you think that guy was really shooting at him or was he just looking for an event to shoot at? Uh, I, I, I gotta say, it's kind of hard to get the methodology. He wasn't seeming to make a big political statement, but people want to point to the 15 bucks he donated. Look, everything is a Rorschach test anymore. Let's rewind and take a look back at how the convenience has continued to pile up for everybody. Okay, and I've got thunderstorms, I've got loud motorcycles, I've got all kinds of problems, and Mrs. O ain't even home. Anyways, you know what? I'm gonna take a quick break here. And we're going to do the recap as I wanted to, but I might have, I might have a second voice join me here on the show. Let's see how that goes. The Ocelli effect continues after this. by callers, students, or anyone else who happens to get on the air at Ocelli.com do not necessarily reflect the views of Ocelli.com or Chuck Ocelli. And we are not responsible for any stupidity which might ensue. Thank you.
nuclear holocaust. You know what uranium is, right? Think called nuclear weapons and other things like lots of. You know what uranium is, right? Bad things. Things are done with uranium, including some bad things. <laughs> And we're back because bad things are done with uranium. Anyway, who's we now? Who's we, white man? Uh, anyway, I do have a white guy with me. I think he's a white guy. Does he self-identify as a white guy? Is he pretty fly for a white guy? Remember, that's was that the offspring? Yeah, I think that was the offspring. <laughs> Regular Joe. How you doing, man? Pale as usual. Pale. So you are still, uh, you know, I don't remember if you have blue eyes. Do you have blue eyes or no? You have green eyes? I forget. Well, they're kind of brown, kind of green, depends on the light. So I guess that's hazel. Oh, you're one of those hazel people. Okay. So you can't officially be a blue-eyed devil, but you could be a hazel-eyed devil, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Little right. green, little brown, just depends on the light. Cool. So, look, we are white devils uh, in some ways, although being that I am part Sicilian, that means that I don't qualify as white to a purist. But it, it, it happens. I'm also Irish, which is the lowest level of white people. But well, wait, that's, that's, that's part of my heritage as well. I'm Irish, English. Yeah, I was just so. going to say you're part Irish, so you're you're part of the uh, lowest level of white people as well, right? Yes, that's correct. Okay, cool. <laughs> We're going to talk about race in a minute, but first, I got to get through the events that I haven't really gone hardcore to comment on because I've just let the Friday night shows roll, and you know, Jimmy James is a Trump supporter, and BP thinks the Democrats are evil and need to be wiped off the face of the earth, and I get that, but I try to explain that the more you point at somebody and call them evil, the more somebody might take you seriously if you have influence over others, and you know, people want to deny that, but anyway. I leave it at that because I have to recap these events. It's been a weird couple of weeks. Where did it all start? Well, look, we were all yawning over the two old men are going to have, you know, Trump versus Biden part two. Right. Yeah. The, the guy who said that that he was robbed, you know what I mean? Like in the old days, <laughs> he was robbed. I, I, I say that because black fighters used to say that all the time. They'd get angry. And, you know, when the judge's cards went against him in a boxing match, they was robbed. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so Trump thought he was robbed. You know, they, they couldn't stop the steal, uh, even though they had January 6th. And how do they steal something from me you don't own? Look. I don't want to go that far back in the history, but we all know what was coming. Two old men going to battle it out to be your grand leader. And it was Orange Jesus versus the guy who was clearly impaired because he's old. By the way, they're both old. <laughs> Any, anyhow. Yeah, I mean, 78 years old and everybody was griping back in the uh, last election that Biden was too old. Biden's too old. Well, you know, Trump's a year older than he was when he ran now. So, you know, why are you talking out of both sides of your mouth? He's too old, too. Well, it's funny because it, 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 it's always out of both sides of the mouth because when it's your guy who does something, it's OK. When it's their guy who does it, it's a bad thing. You know, like the presidential immunity and all these other things. Anyway, I got to rewind this because... It was the yawn, here we go again. And all I kept saying for the past couple of years is, don't worry, Trump will be reinstalled. So all you pro-Trump people, calm down. You're going to be real happy soon. And this Biden is clearly a, a walking failure. And we're all getting squeezed to death because of the economy. So, you know, look, it doesn't matter what the reality is even, whether Biden is responsible for this disastrous economy or not. Which, by the way, the president doesn't really <laughs> run the economy, but shh, don't tell him that, Joe. Um, but but either way, they're going to hold him responsible. And that's what we've always done in this country. It doesn't even matter, even before the, the, the time of Orange Jesus. Uh, people held the president responsible. Okay. So we knew where we were going. And then they did the ill-advisable thing, the Biden campaign. They set it up so that they could have a debate. Between Joe, you know, slow or sleepy Joe or whatever you want to call him, whatever Trump wants to call him today, who cares? And the ranting and raving weirdness of Donald Trump. And you knew you were going to get that. But then when they agreed to the debate, I mean, anybody in their right mind said, how is Biden going to debate Trump? He can't keep his facts straight. I mean, he literally said that he was the first black vice presidential woman uh, at one point, you know, <laughs> 
during the debate, he said that, you know, that, that they beat up Medicare or something. Look, very, very strange. Total disaster. A public meltdown that his own people allowed to happen. That's that's elder abuse, man. I don't yeah. know how it can be construed as anything other. Well, it is, but the, for those that hate Biden, nah, screw him. See, look, we told you he was mentally impaired. Okay, okay, you win. You win. The sky is blue, water's wet, women are crazy. I get it. You win. Yeah, and he's 81 years old. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, you know, to me, it's like it's a good thing that really the president is not quite as powerful as people imagine him to be. He is powerful, but not in the ways people think he is, although that might be changing. Anyhow, in the meantime, what happens? Trump gets convicted of felonies, all that stuff before the debate, right? 34 felonies. They were counting them up. Matter of fact, one of those uh, uh, more liberal uh, mainstream media outlets, corporate media, sat there and had a lady count. One, two, three, four. I mean, literally, she went to 34 counts. Funny stuff. The Democrats running around going, it doesn't matter if our guy's a little slow. It doesn't matter if he stutters. It doesn't matter if he mixes up his words. He has senior moments because he's not evil like Trump. Okay, I'll take your point. I'll say, fine, I get it. But incompetence versus what? Incoherence? Or is it incoherence one way and incoherence another way? And then they were saying he's on cocaine. And I'm like, look, if he was on cocaine, he'd be a lot more awake. All right. So calm down with that. But anyway, they put him on. It's almost like somebody set him up for failure because it is the dumbest strategic move to put that guy on the spot for an hour, standing up that long. Number one. Number two, having to speak on the cuff. He doesn't even know where he is half the time. If, if, <laughs> the guy. And, and it is what it is. Is it elder abuse? Maybe. Do I care that much? Not too much. He's also got a dog that keeps biting people because, you know, nobody knows how to control the dog over there either. Which, by the way, anybody know what happened to Biden's dog? Uh, all right. Forget it. N never mind. I'm, I'm asking rhetorical question after rhetorical question. Back to the timeline of events, Joe. <laughs> so they do that thing. Now, People all across, obviously, his opponents are screaming he needs to step down. He's mentally incompetent, you know, incontinent, incompetent, etc. And he is fine. But, um, you know, here, here we go. Uh, he needs to step down. He needs to step aside, etc., etc., etc. And to me, the competition hadn't changed yet. But people were calling for him to step aside, not to run, let somebody else run. We got to save this, et cetera, et cetera. And to me, Joe, I know you haven't heard this because you haven't been around the show and you haven't been listening lately. So I'm going to give you some uh, uh, fresh stuff here and inform you in a unique way. I want you to listen carefully. Okay. A little mozzarella on top. <laughs> This is just great. Frankly, this is the greatest spaghetti I've ever had. This is some great spaghetti. Fettuccine, linguine, lasagna, we've got it. Hmm. Sometimes, Don, I think all this pasta has a mind of its own. It's impossible. The economy is booming. I'd like to propose some changes the way you're doing things. We got to speed this up. Just, oh, very good. Use your mouth. Okay. Tremendous job. Okay, for those that don't know, <laughs> that's an AI created thing. Trump and Biden slurping down pasta, and that's pretty much what everything sounded like on the news to me. No big deal. But we expected this. Okay. And he fails in public. Okay. And everybody's having this grand debate. Biden needs to step aside. His opponents and his allies are screaming he needs to step aside. Problem was, what are they going to do now? Everybody's already prearranged the delegations to him. They've sworn their allegiance to him and all of that. Even though Biden said at one point he wouldn't run again. And uh, et cetera, et cetera. And, of course, uh, uh, Dr. Jill was out there telling us, he's fine, don't worry about it, like they've been telling us for the past few years. Uh, obviously, he's not. And, you know, I tried to have good humor about it, but it, it was what it was. Then we get what, Joe? The, ready? The, 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 the catchphrase. The assassination attempt against Donald Trump. Uh, All right. Now, 
is it actually an assassination attempt? Because as far as I know, motive has not been established. The shooter's dead. And to me, he fits the profile of a mass shooter. So it could be that because in the Northeast in July, the schools are not in session. This guy couldn't find a high school to shoot up, so he went to the biggest crowd. Now, I know people argue on one side, hey, he was a registered Republican. On the other side, he gave 15 bucks to a Democrat, whatever. I don't care. I don't think he cared because you usually don't end up climbing up on a shed in what should be an act of suicide if you're aware of the target you're trying to hit if you were actually trying to shoot up Trump or that event. You're committing suicide by cop, number one. And number two, um, you're not expecting to live, make a political statement. He didn't publish a manifesto. So I don't know. I don't know what to make of that. I do know that, to my estimation, Trump was not hit in the ear by a bullet. He was hit by a piece of debris that came from the bullet. He wasn't a millimeter from death. However, the Republican convention for five days wanted to tell you how the hand of God intervened. It was like that scene from Pulp Fiction, Joe. God God got involved. Um, And, you know, they literally had black preachers on the RNC stage. And... I don't know if you caught this, but this is the greatest priceless gem from the Republican National Convention, which was not really about the Republican platform or the Republican Party, but the cult of personality that is Donald Trump. And this, in and of itself, I won't play the whole thing, but got to say, this is the the exemplar, the absolute uh, demonstrable, perfect singular sound clip that I could play for you. Outside of that one black preacher that was saying that Jesus protected him, therefore you got to realize that President Trump is on God's side, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Outside of that guy, this is the guy that absolutely encapsulates and <clears throat> completely represents the entire Republican National Convention. You know something? When I came here tonight, there was so much energy in this room. I felt maybe I was in Madison Square Garden getting ready to win another world title. Maybe I thought the vibe was so intense, the energy was so crazy, it felt like maybe I was going to press that no good stinky giant over my head. And I'm not done. Because this is the part I really meant to play. Well, let me tell you something, brother. You know something? When I came here tonight, there was so much energy in this room. I felt maybe I was in Madison Square Garden getting ready to win another world title. Or maybe I thought... The vibe was so intense, the energy was so crazy, it felt like maybe I was going to press that no-good stinky giant over my head and slam him through the mat, brother. But what I found out was I was in a room full of real Americans, brother. And at the end of the day, with our leader up there, my hero, that gladiator, we're going to bring America back together. One real American at a time, brother. I am a real American. (laughs) Fight for the... (laughs) I'm a speech writer. I can't tell the difference. (laughs) That is Hulk Hogan. Of course. He, he he might actually be Donald Trump's speech writer. Well, yeah, but but he you know but he's even putting on the voice. I love that because you know you see Terry talk now you know in interviews and he's like, yeah, I'll tell you it was a rough time when I was sitting there dealing with the steroids and I got fired from the WWE and I'll tell you I, I lost friends and you know he talks like that. But he goes on stage for Trump and he goes, well, let me tell you something, brother. Here we go with the prayers and the vitamins and the sweat and the tears. Um. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I got to tell you, I was going to pick up that stinky giant, Andre the Giant. 
he was he was thinking back to when he slammed Andre the Giant. What was that? Thirty five years ago. I mean, Hulk, Hulk is old. I'm surprised he's still alive because I mean the, the 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 you know the the lifespan of WWE stars is rough. Um, but of course, he didn't speak the first night. Stephanie McMahon was on there. But I mean, Hulk keeps going. I mean, he's got a long speech here, pretty long for him. You know, because usually he does the two-minute shots on TV, his promos he cuts, right? But And I see all the real Americans. I think about how Donald Trump, his family was compromised. When I look out there and I see Donald Trump, I think about how his business was compromised. I wonder if, 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 if Terry remembers when his family was compromised. <laughs> Or, you know, when he, when he had problems with his daughter being a hiller and uh, and all that. And I remember, if, I wonder if Terry remembers the steroid problem, you know, because he's in a suit jacket now. Even though later on he does, you know, take off the suit jacket, show you the pythons. And you, you notice he's got that same timber as, as Alex Jones, by the way. You notice it's the same kind of thing. Um, anyway, you know, who's doing an emergency broadcast? They've done, the globalists have uh, absolutely committed a, uh, you know, a coup against the country. And I'm thinking to myself, the globalists committed a coup. I thought the globalists were represented by Joe Biden. Joe Biden is at the head of the government right now. He is stepping aside in the presidential selection. Oops, I messed up the timeline. Hold on, back to it. <laughs> the timeline, Joe. So I, I already went through the, the disaster the assassination attempt, so-called, the RNC convention that went on, which was this weird religious revival slash WWE event with literal WWE stars. I mean, more than one Hall of Famer present. Well, um, I mean, yeah. their guy is a Hall of Famer from the WWE. Well, yeah, I'm, count, I'm counting them. Yeah. No, I'm counting them. And yeah. Stephanie McMahon was the you know co-owner, co-chair, co-everything, right, you know, along with Vince. Stephanie, yep. right? So, no, it makes sense. I get the WWE element. And, of course, his crowd has got to be. And I want everybody who's, you know, uh, Trump's great, Trump's great. I want all of you to remember, you know, wrestling is real is a lot of your brethren there, okay? Anyway. Yeah, and the, the other part of your brethren were guests <laughs> on the Jerry Springer show in the 90s. Maybe, maybe. Although now, by the way, uh, Trump selected J.D. Vance, which I tried to tell people in advance that they were going to select Vance, but nobody believed me, um, which is really funny because he's got a uh, a, a hillbilly backstory that people yeah, are now I slapping. Think, <laughs> I don't appreciate that too much either. <laughs> I wanted to ask you about that personally, uh, Joe, because I don't know how much news you're watching. Because uh, you're from Kentucky. Um, and does, isn't J.D. Vance kind of claiming, I'm, hey, look, I'm a local guy from Kentucky, and I was dirt poor and all? Well, he was, but then he backed his story down saying, no, I was born and raised in Ohio. I just spent summers in Kentucky with my extended family. Yeah, he went to go see that grandma on that side because somebody had to get rid of his dumb ass and get him out of Ohio temporarily. I get it. It's okay. Uh, but but that's fine. He's got a fake backstory, whatever. You know, he also said this week that Diet Mountain Dew is racist, and he thought he was funny. But it doesn't work out. Um, anyway. J.D. Vance, I got no problem. And I got no problem at this point with the idea that Donald Trump is absolutely the pre-selected anointed one. He was there before the assassination attempt. He was already, and they set up Biden because that was absolutely, anybody who's got half a brain who's on his side, who's not trying to set him up for failure, would not have put him on that debate stage. So they set up Biden. Trump is, I don't think it was manufactured or arranged. People are coming up with all kinds of conspiracy theories for this kid who I swear to you was a school shooter in search of a school. That kid is organic, though. I can't tell you what his motive was. Uh, people are making up their own motives for him, and that's all there is to it. And that is the, the you know, that is the spirit of the time, the zeitgeist, if you will. But look, let's get away from that because it goes on and on. Then the cases continue to evaporate against Trump, and they will continue to evaporate. As I've told you, he's not getting sentenced. He's not going to be convicted on anything else. The undermining of the prosecution, whether rightly or wrongly, the Supreme Court made a decision, which now makes you know some of the charges ineligible. Some of the evidence has to be thrown out. Slowly but surely, in the year of the lawsuit, Donald 
Donald Trump is even going to have that E. Jean Carroll thing rewound. And, you know, even though they keep saying, yeah, he's a conv- convicted uh, sexual predator, even that is going to go away because all of it has been constructed to make him the anti-hero fighting the system. And that's all there is to it. But the funny thing to me is that I figured after they set up Biden to fail and make it justifiable that there's no way the old, you know, uh, weekend at Bernie's president can anywhere near approach, you know, the wit of Donald Trump, even when he's ranting and raving and not making sense, at least he's able to rant. (laughs) Um, But then you get the news that guess what? Biden drops out of the race. Okay, and the the secrets the head of the Secret Service, which I thought was funny, does then resign. Cheadle, Kim Cheadle, resigned after they put on the big political show, and you know people from both sides of the aisle yelled at her in Congress and demanded answers that she wouldn't give up because she didn't know how to answer the question, and clearly she was in over her head, even though she's been in that business allegedly for like twenty five thirty years. It's all irrelevant because she needed to go. She really should have resigned right away. But they didn't do that. And they have the continued investigation and the continued crap going on about this alleged assassination attempt. Cheadle is even, even, you know, being attacked by Democrats. But even funnier than that is that when Joe steps aside... They make the strategically wrong decision again and say, you know what? We got to support Kamala. Now, it's strategically wrong, but it makes perfect sense because can the very liberal Democrats tell the only woman of color to ever be either president or vice president? Can they tell her to not run? (laughs) Can they tell her she's got a clear and open Invitation to the ticket. Joe's even willing to turn his delegates over to her. You're going to tell the black woman not to run? You're kidding me, right? No, you're not. Not if you're a Democrat. Are you kidding me? And, you know, come on now. Okay, so so we knew that wasn't going to happen. I mean, even, even Chuck E. Cheese Schumer and Hakeem Jeffries had to come out and swear fealty to Kamala. All right. And then in in the midst of all this, by the way, CrowdStrike has a glitch and screws up all kinds of things, airplanes, the Internet, you know, pay no attention to that. CrowdStrike doesn't really count. And, oh, the Russia hoax, right? Not much of a hoax when you start to understand what happened. But was Donald Trump really aware? Can you prove mens rea? Oh, I'm sorry. I went too far back in the timeline. But even funnier now is this idiocy that I see out there and. Even Maria Heller has been caught up in this idea that now young people are energized. There's actually enthusiasm on the left. There's there's actually an opposition to Trump now, for real. And it's not just slow Joes half asleep doing it. Kamala is a real threat. Young people and women are happy. And why are women happy? Because after all, she's pro-choice. She's going to reset the Roe v. Wade situation. She's going to be the savior. And oh, by the way, the economy's doing well. Just sucks for you. But it's not, it's doing well on all metrics, right? I, I don't know where, how. You know, the, the big question I asked when Obama was in office, too economic recovery, where, who? Not me, not anybody I know. But anyway, pay no attention to that and pay no attention to the fact that she bears responsibility for being the vice president during a time when we've had massive economic decline. And it's the one true argument that the Trumpers can make that on one level you can't argue with, where they say, look, were you more or less broke when Trump was in there versus Biden? You got to say, well, I was less broke when Trump was in there. Was Trump responsible for that? No, but it doesn't matter because that's the perception and perception and opinion are king. But even uh, people, people just seem to forget so quickly those stimulus checks they cashed, huh? Oh, no, but that's all Biden's fault. It's just like, you know, the vaccine. If you object to the vaccine, that's Biden's fault. The stimulus checks are all Biden's fault. Everything is Biden's fault. Even if Trump was the one who was in office at the time, it doesn't matter. I I get that. And, And the people on the other side won't blame Biden for the crap. He is clearly 
done terribly. I mean, you know, we, we could make a list of accomplishments. I mean, the, the, the terrible withdrawal from Afghanistan, which was going to be a disaster one way or another, but could he have made it, you know, not as screwed up as commander in chief? I, I think so, because it, it looked pretty bad. But meanwhile, the alleged energy that has come in because of Kamala, Joe, and and don't worry, we're going to get to the point where we really discuss this. I'm still doing the recap because I didn't do a full-throated show without being interfered with by others on any of these subjects over the past couple of weeks. I've tried to hold it back. Okay, I can't, can't do it anymore. Can't hold that in? No, I got a bit. I got a bit. And, and I want you to listen to Kamala now because... Here comes another part of the grift. While hundreds of millions of dollars are still being devoted, and by the way, in like three days, she she raised something like two hundred to three hundred million dollars, uh, uh, being backed now as the you know the heir apparent to Joe Biden's lock for the nomination. Now we could get to the convention and people will you know think rationally and decide to do something differently. That could happen. And there's other things going on in the news and I'll get there. But I mean that could happen. That could be a rational thing but as uh, Bobby Kennedy's uh, uh, most recent uh, email to people that support his campaign which I no longer support but I'm still on the email list. uh, Bobby Kennedy sent out and said Democrats are just not doing democracy anymore. He's right. Uh, but that's not news. And he's nothing but a shill at this point for big tech, and he was just basically going to be weaponized to assure Trump's victory as well. See, a lot of assets were deployed to assure it doesn't matter really who votes or who's actually being supported, but you got to make it look like it's logical for Trump to win because that's the wall they never want to hit again. See, they would have installed Hillary in 2016, but nobody would have bought that. The CIA stole that that selection. Nobody would have bought it, Joe. Nobody. Because there was no enthusiasm. Bro. Trump had legitimate enthusiasm. And once they figured out he's just as useful a tool for the deep state as she is, uh, just... You know, different people will profit uh, among the competitors at the great grand uh, roundtables. Once they figured that out, they made it so he won with no problem at all. But was it legitimate? Yeah, probably, but only because Hillary was such a despicable human being and such a non-relatable entity. I mean, you know, come on. She didn't even appear to be warm-blooded. No, and Dave Chappelle's skit on that was the, just the the best description of that I ever heard. You know, he said she was going to be the first woman president. They were going to make coins out of this bitch. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then he said, "I wish she hadn't farted in this great nation's face." <laughs> yeah, that would have been nice, but no. And here's the fun part about they were going to make coins out of this bitch is guess what? <laughs> they still might. <laughs> Stay tuned. Um. Okay, and 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 you know what? I don't know if you know this one, Joe, but even she put her support now behind Kamala. So all of the Democratic establishment have put themselves behind a clear loser, Kamala. And clear gonna, loser. And I'm going to play for you now. Now, now, you know the crowd sound excited. The the you know the corporate media people are excited. The uh, right wing media are freaking out. They don't know which narrative to sell you. Did she ruin the border? I thought Joe Biden had the open borders. No, she was responsible because she was allegedly the border czar, even though she's been a non-entity for three years. All of a sudden, she has support because at least she's not a walking corpse. I get it, but is she legit? Let's listen to some of her words from her first, ready for this one, because they had to quickly transpose the Biden uh, you know, campaign into the Harris campaign. And by the way, God knows what they're going to come up with for a VP candidate with her. But I mean, uh, They're saying that it's probably going to be old Uncle Andy from my great state. Well, you know, that's funny because they had him on TV and asking him, are you going to take it if it's offered to you? And he's like, I don't think so. Oh, well, good for Andy. Yeah, but but then again, you know, a politician might flip-flop. Oh, crap, that never happens. Let's listen to Kamala for a second, though, before we really dissect this. And then I want to find out what your view is on this, because I got a strange feeling that even though you and I have not discussed any of this over the past few months, none of it, um, I want to see what your reaction is, because I got this strange feeling that you're going to put it differently. But you're going to have the same feeling and the same conclusions that I do. But I want to get your impressions of all of this. But let's listen to 
Kamala and her crowd for a moment at her first uh, alleged campaign rally in, uh, I believe it's in Milwaukee. Obligatory extra loud crowd noise, of course. Thank you. 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 Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Wisconsin. I did say it was Milwaukee, right, Joe? Uh, yes, you okay. did. Okay, yeah, okay. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Okay, I just want to make sure I got my facts straight. All right, here we go. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you. It is good to be back. Thank you all very much. Can we please hear it for Leah and her extraordinary story and leadership? Thank you. And I do believe our teachers do God's work. They teach other people's children, and God knows we don't pay them enough. Let's thank them. Now, all that squeaky and enthusiasm, you got to say at the very least back. she's not an old man so and depends. But let's continue. Leaders, including my friend, the great governor of Wisconsin, Tony Evers. He's here somewhere. My dear friend. Senator Tammy Baldwin. Yikes! These are all the, uh, the, the, the these are all the obligatories before she has to get to also kissing Joe Biden's backside for turning over the delegates to her. But let's bear with it a few moments. That the folks that are here are going to make sure you return her to Washington D.C. in November. Support the down ballot Democrats. Squeak, squeak. Sorry. All right. Sorry. Sorry. Yes, we are going to elect her back to Washington, D.C. It is so good to be here also with Lieutenant Governor Sarah Rodriguez, (laughs) Attorney General Josh Cole. Uh, It's like a female rapper at the Grammys already. Come on. I want to thank God. I want to thank my producer. I want to thank my assistant. I want to thank my my baby mama. I want to thank. Come on. And a whole bunch of other people you never heard of because I'm trying to juice it up. All right, come on. Let's point and smile. Let's go. I can attest he knows how to build the infrastructure that delivers wins up and down the ballot. Thank you, Ben. So it is good to be back in Wisconsin, and it is great to be in Milwaukee. As many of you know, our state campaign headquarters are in this city. No, Joe Biden's headquarters are in that city. You now have them. I mean, uh, come on. Come on. Can we be honest about anything uh, from the top? Uh, I forgot how many thank yous there are. We're already like three minutes into this damn thing, and we're not getting to the substance because guess what? There isn't any. But. I want to get to the Joe Biden thank you and then into the substance of our discussion if we could. Let's see if I can patiently get through it. Hold on. And in 2024, we will win again. Or lose like you usually do when you're at the head of the ticket. Remember, you couldn't beat Biden even though you played the wounded black girl on the bus. Remember that? Well, I was a black girl on the bus, Joe. And and now Joe Biden is the greatest president. Squeak, squeak. All right, sorry. So, Milwaukee, I want to start by saying a few words, and I can really speak at length, but a few words about our incredible President Joe Biden. I've been going four and a half minutes already. Start. Come on. It has truly been one of the greatest honors of my life. Lord help us all. You know, I, I get a commercial now, too, but it, it's been one of the true honors of her life to do what? To be a non-entity for three years and collect a paycheck and allegedly be put in charge of the border where she did nothing also? I mean, come on. 
the vice president to our president, Joe Biden. Joe's legacy of accomplishment over his entire career and over the past three and a half years is unmatched in modern history. Yeah, it's unmatched. The withdrawal from Afghanistan, complete disaster, horrible economy, all kinds of lies coming out about this and that. He did figure out how to monetize the crackhead, though, so I got to give him that when it comes to Hunter and the laptop and everything else. And also, you know, <laughs> somehow, even with dementia, managed to stay in the office of president. But yeah, that's that's a hell of a three years, Kamala. <laughs> Anyway, in one term, think about it. In one term, yeah, in as one term. president, he has already surpassed the legacy of most presidents who served two terms in office. <laughs> and I know we are all deeply, deeply grateful for his continuing service to our nation. And it is my great honor to have Joe Biden's endorsement in this race. Yeah, somebody still tell him that he's serving the nation because I don't think he, he knows that yet. He also said he was going to be at all these campaign things. I don't think he was at this one, but uh, here we go. So, Wisconsin, I am told as of this morning that we have earned the support of enough delegates to secure the Democratic Earned. No, she inherited from Biden who turned him over to her. That's not earning. That's having something handed to you. But I don't expect a prosecutor from California and to know the I difference. I'm so very honored. And I pledge to you, I will spend the coming weeks continuing to unite our party so that we are ready to win in November. <laughs> So, friends, we have 105 days until Election Day, and in that time, we've got some work to do. But we're not afraid of hard work. We like hard work, don't we? Do you? Because I haven't seen you for the past three years. I, I don't know what you've been doing. So, hard work, hardly working? Is that the joke? Yeah, I forgot how to pronounce her name. Oh, Kamala. Until today, I was running around calling her Kamala. Yeah, no, nah, me too, usually. But, no, i got to remind myself, too. Kamala, right? It's very important. Okay. And we will win this election. See, but how do you know that since you've never pulled that off before and you got beaten terribly in the primary by a guy who, you know, was clearly on his way out? <laughs> I mean, you know, just saying. And everybody else in that primary beat your ass, too. I mean, you dropped pretty early. I think Mayor Poot, uh, uh, Mayor Poot, that's funny. Mayor Pete uh, got ahead of you, too, beat you, didn't she? Didn't he? Didn't she? Yeah, didn't he? Yeah. Okay, whatever. Anyway. Is that right? Sorry? <laughs> Is that who you're talking about? Is that how you say his name? Buttigieg. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's it. Right. right that guy. You know, where, where, where's Keisha Lance Bottoms when we need her? All right, back to it. Yes, we will. Yes, we will. As Leah told you, before I was elected vice president, before I was elected United States senator, I was elected attorney general of the state of California, and I was a courtroom prosecutor before then. And in those roles, I took on perpetrators of all kinds. In the most crooked, okay, uh, state in the union when it comes to courts. This is a prosecutor. You know, look, look up crooked cops and framing people and screwing people over, and California should come up in your top results. But I love this point that she's going to make. And by the way, she's got all kinds of campaign commercials that were ready to roll right away that made the point that she's about to make. Predators who abused women. Fraudsters who ripped off consumers. Cheaters who broke the rules for their own gain. So hear me when I say, I know Donald Trump's type. See, even though that's true, who do you root for? The crooked crook 
or the crooked prosecutor who's crooked. You know, Man. <laughs> but does she have a point? Maybe. But but listen to that. That was the only thing she said with real confidence. The rest of it was squeak, squeak, squeak. I got to try and sound enthusiastic and high energy. Squeak, squeak. But she believes that part about I know who Donald Trump is, even though those cases are all evaporating. And mark my words, by the way, even the E. Jean Carroll thing that, you know, he's supposed to pay her for damages for the uh, alleged sexual assault and all that. That is also going to go away. It doesn't matter if it is an illegitimate charge or a legitimate charge, by the way. Some of the charges are illegitimate. I'll admit that. I got no problem with it because I got no dog in this fight. I see one party performing art to show you, to, to, to put on a stage show. I see the WWE in action here and not just on the Republican side because here's your good guys, here's your bad guys. Now root for the good guys, root for the face. I get it. But it doesn't matter if the charges against Trump are legitimate or not. As he said years ago, I could shoot somebody in the face on Fifth Avenue and get away with it. People would still vote for me. He's right. He's- yes, he's, he's 100% right. I mean, you've got people. My mom told me about this because, you know, I don't do social media. But she's seeing people on social media mm-hmm. that are wearing bandages on their ears in support of Trump. Oh, now, I forgot. Well, we saw. We saw this back in 69 and 70 when Charlie car- carved an X in his head, didn't we? You know, you're right. And and I forgot to mention that because that was a big feature at the RNC is people putting on the white bandage over the ear to show solidarity with the wounded and now nearly martyred Orange Jesus, who has been protected by the hand of God. <laughs> I should really go get that, that preacher. Did you hear the preacher at the RNC? Did you hear him? No, no, I didn't watch. You, you know, I've been trying to. I know you've not been... watch, and I, I skim headlines sometimes. But, yeah, no, you know. I know you've been trying to avoid it, but still, you're well informed for somebody who's trying to avoid it. I wonder why that is. Let's listen to just a little more Kamala, real quick. Maybe I'll go get that preacher while I'm at it. But uh, let's just take another listen. I'll leave her alone and and let her run her crap. She really believes in this prosecutorial nonsense. I'm a prosecutor. I'm the perfect person, and that's the narrative. I, the prosecutor versus the actual criminal. And the truth is they're all criminals. Oh fact. But yeah. but that's a fact. you know, but but I'm gonna play prosecutor and he's gonna play the heel. He's not even a really good criminal. He's a crappy white collar criminal. That's what he is. And the only thing that's made it good is that no matter what, he gets supplied with more money to drop. So yep. You know, it's all good. He can lose a billion dollars. Nobody points to that. He's a good businessman. I know. It's okay. And it doesn't matter what I say or what I point out or what reality is because everybody's opinion and their point of view is what counts, not the reality. And on both sides. It's like you've got to go to Atlantic City. What's the number one rule of the house if if it's the casino? What's the number one rule? Oh, you mean the house always wins that? Yeah. Always wins unless Donald Trump owns it and then it's bankrupt. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) How do you bank? You know, it's still riddle me this, Batman. How do you lose money in three casinos in Atlantic City? I don't know. That's a hell of a thing. Because I'm sure I could put a retarded monkey with a slingshot in charge of a casino and it would make money in Atlantic City. But absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> but let's let's listen a little more to Kamala for a minute. And may, maybe I'll go get the preacher. And then I want you to give me your overall view on everything, Joe. Let, okay. After we just soak this in a little more of this thing that's exciting and energizing young people across the aisle and everything. And now the Democrats really have a legitimate opponent. Yeah, uh, like Jerry Cooney was going to beat Larry Holmes, okay? Uh, but there we go. put my record against his any day of the week. Uh, As Attorney General of California, I took on one of our country's largest for-profit colleges that was scamming students. My name is- Donald Trump ran a for-profit college that scammed students. <laughs> 
a prosecutor, I specialized in cases involving sexual abuse. Well, Trump was found liable for committing sexual abuse. As Attorney General of California, I took on the big Wall Street banks and held them accountable for fraud. Donald Trump was just found guilty of fraud on 34 counts. <laughs> but let's also make no mistake, this campaign... Did somebody just yell, wrap it up? I, did, did I hear that? <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Here we go. Sorry. sorry. Is not just about us versus Donald Trump. Don't miss the fright. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's not just about us versus. Yes, it is. It's now you versus Donald Trump. And you don't even have a VP candidate, but that's okay. Anyway. To be continued, and, and here we go, just a little more, a little more. This campaign is about who we fight for. <laughs> this is about who we fight for. Just look at how we are running our campaigns. So Donald Trump is relying on support. Okay, up until 48 hours before this, she didn't have a campaign. How we are running our campaigns. You mean the campaign you inherited from... Uh, your 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 great president Joe Biden, who turned it over to you. See again, people don't understand. Uh, Trump doesn't, and nor does she. This is a common out, a common uh, ground. They don't understand the difference between having something handed to you and having to earn it. They don't understand the definition. But a uh, little little more Kamala before I get to uh, Minister Sewell. Okay, Reverend Sewell, hold on. From billionaires and big corporations. And he is trading access in exchange for campaign contributions. A couple months ago, you all saw that a couple months ago at Mar-a-Lago, he literally promised big oil companies, big oil lobbyists, he would do their bidding for $1 billion in campaign donations. Well, see, I got to give it to Trump there because he got a lot more money out of the oil companies than it usually costs for them to buy both parties. So you got to give it to Trump there. That is actually a sign of good business. So maybe on occasion he is a good businessman. I mean, you know, look, I got I got to call it like I see it. Anyway, back to her. Just, just a little more, a little more, guys. Bear with us. breaking news we just had the best 24 hours of grassroots fundraising in presidential campaign history see i want to know where the people are that are doing the grassroots donating to these presidential candidates because they are obviously not suffering in the same economy that i am and that the majority of you out there listening to me are because they have dumped billions of dollars into both sides of this equation to earn an office that is not even going to net them more than one and a half million dollars or so okay in 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 revenue as their pay it's so you know outside of the pay to play stuff which by the way both sides sell out i mean we know this and both sides sell out to oil and both sides sell out to other things i mean as much as trump has sold out to russia so are the democrats sold out to china so are both sides actually sold out to wall street which is why i had a hard time containing myself when she said she took on wall street bankers but let's get to the real crux of the issue the pro-abortion pro-prosecution pro-authoritarian kamala versus the wwe hall of fame orange jesus and here's the real why and how it is that he actually trumps the dnc candidate no matter who they stick on that ticket now uh and that's that and here's why how and all of it in a nutshell from the right reverend Pastor Lorenzo Sewell. 
It's Pastor Lorenzo Sewell. I have the honor and the privilege of being a senior pastor at 180 Church. And we were blessed last month to have President Donald Trump come to Detroit, Michigan. Let's go. Can you imagine it? Can you imagine President Donald Trump coming to a city and calling a pastor like me? A pastor who was born and raised on the east side of Detroit. I was mentored by murderers. I was a student of the street. But I had a radical experience with Jesus Christ that changed my life forever. Come on, if you believe that Jesus still changed lives, come on, put your hands together and give our great God great glory. The sea of white people cheering on. Yeah, I was trained by murderers and Jesus came into my life and cleaned it all away. The sea of white people cheering that on. You know, sorry, go ahead. That was a pastor because it sounded like Bruce Buffer. It is, again, Lorenzo Sewell as he introduced himself and as I introduced him. Pastor from Detroit, but hold on, it gets better. It gets better, Joe. And and this is my final sound clip. And then I want your opinions on all of it, okay? Mm -hmm. Because this is the whole thing in a nutshell. President Trump came to a church that is in a Democratic stronghold. He came to a church to listen to average, everyday Americans like you and like me. He came to a church not to speak to us, but to listen to us. He came into a church and a lot of people, they were upset. A lot of people, they would ask me questions. Why would you allow Donald Trump to come into your church? First of all, how delusional do you have to be to believe that the average American uh, matches up with the people that live in the, you know, post-apocalyptic world of Detroit? Mm. Anyway, uh, sorry, I mean, you know, RoboCop. Moving on. How many know that the Bible says we are all sinners and we all need the grace of God? How many know that the Bible says he who has not sinned, let him cast the first stone? Come on, join me. Praise our Jesus. President Donald Trump, he came during his birthday weekend. Let me ask you a question. On his birthday. Grand old party. What would you Which do will be a national holiday. If you were worth $6.7 billion, what would you do for your birthday? Would you come to Detroit? Would you come into the hood hood? Would he you come into the hood hood? Because he cares about average, everyday Americans. This guy looks a lot like Kevin Hart. I just want you to know that. But he does not have Kevin Hart's delivery. Although the call and response is in play. Praise Orange Jesus. (laughs) Praise his name. Say it. Speak it. Speak the truth. Let the party. I need to ask you a question. Let the spirit grab your grand old party. What would you ask for your birthday? If you could go to Mar-a-Lago or if you could go to New York, what would you ask for your birthday? He asked for prayer. He asked for prayer. Prayer. That's right. That's Lord. Orange Jesus. I believe that prayer is preventative and prayer is proactive. I believe that praying in the name of Jesus changes everything. And when we pray for President Trump, only God knew that 30 days later, there would be a miracle by a millimeter. You you ready for this? The near-miss martyrdom story now, okay? Be ready. In a hall where people are walking around with the white bandages on their head, like you said, (laughs) red hats still in play, make America great once again. Newsmax prominently displayed. 
Here is the miracle by a millimeter, Joe. Okay. Only God knew that if we prayed for him during his birthday, there would be a miracle by a millimeter. Our prayer moved the bullet, made a magic bullet. Magic bullet. Yes, Lord. President Trump had moved one millimeter. He wouldn't have been here on Monday to talk to us about how America was going to be made wealthy again. Moving by a millimeter for Monday. If President Donald Trump would have moved just a millimeter, he wouldn't have been here on Tuesday, Preach on Tuesday. to talk about how he was going to make America secure again. No tears day, Lord. No, no security. What about the next day? If Preacher. President Donald Trump would have moved just a millimeter, he wouldn't have been here on Wednesday what to tell day? us how he was going to make America strong again. Strength in that millimeter. Yes, Lord. And if President Trump would have moved just a millimeter, just a millimeter, Lord, we will not be hearing tonight how he was going to make America great again. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes. Praise on Jesus. Take your I seat. just got to talk to you about something called providence and something Speak called sovereignty. Your truth. Speak God's sovereignty is his ability yeah. to be able to do what he wants when he wants because he's God. God's will. And God's providence. It's when he does what he wants, when he wants for all of you. God is with all of you. Just you. God bless Did America you know nowhere that else. President Trump was shot on 611. Well, it's time and for do numbers. Do you know that Ephesians chapter number 6, verse number 11, says, Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power? Praise on Jesus. Praise his name. To all my Democrat friends, I want to ask you one question. Woo! Do you know anybody that was the 45th president? He was no, we convicted of 34 accounts. He raised felonies, $53 million dollars in three million hours and could be the 47th president of the United States in America. And he was Guess shot no. one time. Do you know shot anybody that? Like Guess no. Guess Donald Trump. Yes, Orange Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes. Can I get a witness? Can I? Can I get a? Can I get a? Orange Jesus. <laughs> I was surprised he didn't break out talking in tongues. To all my friends Wait. back in Detroit who are Democrats. In Detroit. I want to ask you just one simple question. You can't deny the power Rock of God in this man's life. You can't deny that God protected him. God protected you him. You deny that it was a millimeter miracle. Millimeter that was miracle. able to save this man's life. Could it be yes, that no. Jesus Christ preserved him for such a time as this? Could it be? Oh, Jesus was preserved. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes. Say his name. Speak it. Say it. Come on. Could it be that when we prayed for him when he came to the round table in Detroit, that Jesus asked and he received, that we sought him and then he found protection? Could it be that the King of glory, the Lord God strong and mighty, the God who is mighty, your hands in the air. Swing them like you just don't care. Praise our Jesus. Good grief. We're in bad shape, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> okay. you, got, you got a preacher up here deifying this degenerate. I almost cursed. I'm sorry. I, I, I dialed it back. But <laughs> okay. You, you, got a, you got a preacher praising this degenerate. You got Kamala Harris who is basically campaigning 
for him and against herself. And, uh, man, just, just put him in now. Who cares? <laughs> the millimeter miracle. <laughs> millimeter miracle. Lord have mercy. The millimeter miracle. Sorry. Probably say the same thing, right? <laughs> Well, you know who ought to be grateful right now is anybody who's opposed to Donald Trump, that he actually was not hit by that bullet. Because if he had been killed, all hell would have actually broke loose. So oh, well, it's, it's, it's going to anyway. I mean, let's let's look at it. If he wins, then the worst faction of people that there are on this side of the world are in control. And if he loses, that same faction is going to burn the world down but 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 you're but you're a democrat joe what's the matter with you you're you're a democrat like joe biden right because your name's joe <laughs> yeah my name's joe i must have voted for him that's I right <laughs> I one time in my entire life and it was a huge mistake because fear got the better of me because i was scared of sarah palin <sighs> wow yeah oh eight it was the only time I ever voted, and it was out of fear. Well, she was, I, I didn't vote for my candidate. I didn't have one. Well, she could see Russia from her house. So, yeah. I mean, you know, and at least she was good looking. Yeah. I give her that. <laughs> yeah, she was. Yeah, she was. But uh, but at the same time, oh, her her religious agenda was just completely frightening to me. But you you got to look at the video of this. The, this sea of, I mean, look, they, they really pushed a lot of people of color on stage. Uh, you know, Vavik Rabaswamy sandwich, that guy. Uh, you know, they put him up there. They put, uh, you know, as many black guys as they could find to put up there. They did all that. Stephanie McMahon came out, small business administrator, WWE co-chair. You know, they did all that. And she talked about how great Donald Trump was with running scripts. It was beautiful. Uh, but. The thing is this, the sea of white people, the normal MAGA, watching this preacher while he does his thing, the only thing that was slightly more comical, because I I lied, I've actually got one more clip, (laughs) and it is the ultimate caption, The, the delusion that some people are under that this cult of personality, this this Trump party, it's no longer the Republican Party. It's the party of Donald Trump. I mean, let's admit it. That party is now dominated by people. And still, they're keeping on board because the one thing they will do is march in lockstep. You know, the Democrats form circular firing squads to intentionally undermine and destroy themselves all the time. But the Republicans know how to stick together, boy. And I'm yep. gonna I'm gonna put up the guy that really proves it. Okay, I, I'm gonna play some sound from him before we're done. But your opinion on all of this, Joe? I'd like to know, really. I mean, forget about my opinion. Maybe I'm stupid, and I just don't get it. That you know the cows are celebrating the butchers. That you know the the the, the people that are poor and broke in Detroit are sitting there wanting to celebrate the man that he says has six million dollars. I don't know where he got that figure from, but good luck. Uh, you know, I mean, maybe he does because he was making good money off of that hotel while he was president and God knows what else. Plus, he got, you know, all those wonderful deals in China for his daughter. And Jared got billions from the oil people and Trump got promises. All right. But, you know, no, no, I, I know I'm crazy. And Hunter Biden. I know Hunter Biden. Again, I got to give credit to the Biden family for figuring out how to monetize crackhead because usually that's where you lose money. But they monetized him. And, you know, you could get into the wretched personal details on all this stuff if you want to, but I don't even want to go there. I just want to go with the fact that people are going to have to look back on this one day with a straight face and realize what it was they were backing. But, Joe, what what is your unmolested opinion about all of this? Talk to me about what you heard that I played and everything else. Oh, sorry, sorry. I, I accidentally played some crowd noise. but And I'm going to get up the capper to this entire bizarro world that we're now looking at that I could not have imagined. I mean, this looks like a movie script to me. I mean, this is, you know, the prequel to idiocracy, obviously. You know, okay. And I like that guy. I like the president there. You know, Camacho, whatever his name was, Mountain Dew, Alessandro. You know, I like him. Yep. He, he was great. But, but anyway, Joe, enough out of me. 
tell me what your impressions of all of this are. Well, you know, I always keep it short and simple. And what I see and what I hear is that both of your alleged parties, if, as if there were two, are lockstep together to put Trump in office because the people don't want the democracy, in quotation marks, if you will. They want a dictator. And I've actually had people tell me that. And Trump's your man. Mm-hmm. Because of his big mouth and his WWE training. Mm. You know, he won't actually be a dictator because he's a moron, but he'll be the figurehead for the dictatorship. And it sounds to me like both sides are working really hard to put him in there because every point that Kamala Harris made is exactly what the RNC is saying to support Trump. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, so they're all in support of Trump. Mm-hmm. I, Every single one yeah, of them. Yeah. And, and people kill me with this. The corporate media is against him, Joe. Why is he on there 24 hours a day and being shoved down your throat constantly? Like I said, do you even know where Kamala Harris has been for the past three years? No. Probably not. No, and I forgot how to pronounce her name because I hadn't seen her in so long or even heard anybody talk about her until Biden dropped out. Mm-hmm. Which was, you know, they're they're all doing it to ensure a Donald Trump victory. Both of your sides are for Donald Trump. Kamala Harris doesn't think she's going to be president. She's there to make sure that Trump is. Hmm. And a stroke of luck, that school shooter that went wayward and decided to shoot at the MAGA rally. Okay. But here's the other fun part, is that there is a contingent among them that has an honest belief in what used to be conservative values, whether you agree with them or not. There are people that are like, you know what? We won when it came to Roe versus Wade. We won when it came to getting the tax cuts the way we wanted. We won with this weird, you know, uh, 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 you know, the battle over the tariffs with China. These are all wins for us. And also, we didn't have to disastrously pull out of Afghanistan. We let the incompetent commander-in-chief Biden do it. So we win there. We win all the way around. Putin likes us. You know what? We're going to have a friendlier situation in the world. Even North Korea, he fell in love there. It's all good if Trump gets back in. Plus, we'll stop sending money to Ukraine. We'll end the war in Israel. We'll win it for them. It'll all be good. We're going to be on the side of God with Orange Jesus. Oh, man, when people start talking that, you know things are fixing to be really bad. But they left out the conservative Republicans. Now, make no mistake, they're on the Trump train, too. Even if they hate him, even if they don't believe in him, let's remember that the guy that he just put in as his VP was calling him an insane sexual predator. Around the time of the, uh, you know, the the Access Hollywood tape came out and the grab him by the, uh, you know what? was happening on TV. That guy came out and said he's an insane predator. He's obviously a cheat. He's a liar. Everything. That guy is now his vice presidential candidate. The guy who has the story about being from Kentucky. You know, <laughs> that guy. You know what that reminds me of, which also relates to Kentucky. Senator Rand Paul hmm. for the nomination against Trump and talked about how he was not qualified, did not know how to do the job, and all of this, and as soon as he did not get the nod, he went lockstep with Trump and still is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah they They're are. all fake. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you, it does not matter who is installed into this office. It doesn't matter who you think wins. Uh-huh. What's important is, as long as we're still participating in this bullshit, we all lose. Yeah, well, you know, and and again, Governor Krispy Kreme, you know, has turned against him uh, now. But he's the only reason that is, is he's personally pissed because he wanted a job and didn't get it. He thought that he would get the nod for the job after the Keebler elf, Jeff Sessions. He thought he'd be the attorney general, at least the next in line, as, as Trump was flipping people over. And Fat Boy never got there. So the governor from Jersey, who is clearly corrupt as well, you know, is pissed because he didn't get... The promised job that he thought he got. He probably had a private conversation. Don't worry. I'm going to get you in there, Chris. I I, I remember you. We're both, you know, we both uh, definitely bled people dry in Jersey. It'll be all right. I'm with you, Chris. But But here's the forgotten element. 
which is sad and I think is the majority of people that are going to give me flack for this show and all the shows where I've done where I've said, look, this is nonsense. The guy's being reinstalled. How is that possible? They're going after him with prosecutors. Notice all the cases falling away. Notice all of the obstacles to Trump getting in, to Trump having difficulty, all of the millions of dollars being raised that he's reporting anyway, you know, and not necessarily the, the money that's really being collected, because I guarantee you there's at least a second set of books. But the forgotten actual conservatives are the funniest part of it. And here's the funny thing about that. The guy who was the head of the CIA and also the head of the State Department because he just switched jobs because, you know, it was time to play musical chairs. The guy who is a stooge for the deep state, but is at the same time a true believer. Check out how this guy can't read a room and, you know, he's not going to be in Trump cabinet 2.0. Here we go. You know, I had the incredible privilege to serve as President Trump's CIA director and Secretary of State. It was, it was my greatest honor to work with him every single day to serve you, the American people. Now, uh, now you all are paying attention. So you know what the Trump administration achieved, but it's worth going through a few of these accomplishments. Let's start with this. There were no new American wars. Didn't get us out of any of the old ones, but true, there were no new ones unless you count some of that shooting in Africa. Oh, wait, those weren't wars. And uh, yeah, OK, sorry. Go, go, go ahead, Mike. border, our southern border, closed. It may seem like a long time ago, but when we took office, there were people's heads being cut off of the, at the beaches. We destroyed ISIS and its caliphate. Okay. They destroyed ISIS, and the borders were closed, even though statistically more people were getting in during the Trump administration than right now under Biden that we've counted so far, which is funny according to official numbers. But that's not the way people feel about it. So that doesn't count. Nope. Anyway, I, I, I love this. Go, go ahead, Mike. And, you know... You know, here's another fun fact. We never lost our Secretary of Defense for two weeks either. You'll remember, for those four years, the evil of Vladimir Putin was held at bay. Okay, check out the dead silence, no clapping for the evil of Vladimir Putin was held at bay. Did did you see the non? Did you hear the non reaction from the crowd? I yeah. did. I did. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Putin, what, what, you're not watching Tucker. What's wrong with you? <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. When we walked out, January of 2021, the Iranian regime was afraid, and the people of Israel were strong and secure, and we treated like the friend and ally that they need to be. The people in Iran were afraid. They were pissed, actually, because he killed Soleimani. Yeah, and hey, that's that's uh, not the point I'm going to take away from that. He said they walked away in January of 2021. Hmm. Uh, inspection. Well, no, but that was just tourists taking a tour of the capital, you know. Oh, good grief. A- anyway, sorry. Let's let's keep going. But remember, this guy. I don't blame. Mike Pompeo, if you don't know who this is speaking, at the RNC also. I don't blame him for what he's saying because 20 years ago in a world that, you know, used to have definitions that made sense when it came to the GOP, his rhetoric would have resounded happily among these people. But listen to it dying. Listen to them going, bring on Stephanie McMahon. Bring on the preacher. Where's Hulk Hogan, damn it? All right, hold on. Everywhere we went, everywhere we went, religious freedom was protected. We held three summits in North Korea, and North Korea was quieted. 
but we had begun to. We- no cheering or clapping for North Korea was quieted. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I do r- distinctly remember missiles being fired anyway and testing of nuclear weapons in North Korea. And But I, I know, we fell in love. And he had to go over there and meet with him and all that. And he met with Kim Jong-un, who is, you know, installed literally at, at the head of a government. But actually, he's not at the head of the government. His dead grandfather is still the head of that government uh, officially in North Korea. But I'm sorry. Let's let's continue on with the non-clapping at Mike Pompeo, your former CIA head. Before we do, let's point out this, too. Sure. North Korea was silenced, even though Kim Jong-un called Trump a dotard. A dotard. I mean, and he was silenced. You know, he got more publicity during that time. If you think very carefully about the publicity that North Korea has gotten over the past three years, very little compared to this time when Trump said it was going to get tough on him and all this stuff. And then he said he sent me. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, yeah, they were silent. Yeah, okay, whatever. Uh, yeah, but silence. The silence is deafening. But let's continue with the non-clapping at Mike Pompeo, who, again, I think actually believes the BS he's pushing. Yeah, his he's crowd honorable... was just quieter than, than North Korea was during the Trump administration. Oh, yeah, definitely. Because, you see, now they are being silenced, but no, by choice. Anyway, let's go on. Exit from Afghanistan. I got it. And... And not a single Chinese spy balloon flew across the United States of America. Four years. People are looking at each other and doing golf claps and stuff like Chinese spy balloon. They don't even remember that. And the Chinese spy balloon, because Trump stopped the Chinese spy balloons. (laughs) Okay, okay, hold on, hold on. Had I been the Secretary of State and a Chinese spy balloon flew across our country, I would have been the former Secretary of State, and rightfully so. You know, under President Trump, the Chinese Communist Party, which to this day presents the greatest threat to our nation from outside of our country, we confronted it like never before. Look, ladies and gentlemen, in short, we put America first every single day. With a wonderful piece of chocolate cake. Uh, 42 months on, what has Joe Biden and Kamala Harris done? And their leftist handles, what have they delivered to us for security and prosperity? Almost nothing. Let's start with this. You saw some of them last night. 13 new Gold Star families from Afghanistan. As an Army veteran, I want to speak to everybody who served in Afghanistan. I'm disgusted by the Biden administration's incompetent pullout from that country. To those of you who served there, know this. Know that your service was honorable, that you saved American lives, and that the Pompeos love and admire you for what you did for America. Thank you, and God bless each and every one of you. Barely any enthusiasm for troop worship. Do you recognize this Republican Party? You out there, you the actual true believer, conservative. Do you recognize a Republican Party that is not saying, you're damn right, and we need to honor the troops, and no, no applause, no enthusiasm. People are staring at him, waiting for him to get off the stage. Understand that this is the mentality of the Trump party. Understand that this is the reality of the Red Hat. It is not the Republican Party that you thought you knew when you were young. It is not Ronald Reagan's party, and Ronald Reagan's party wasn't Ronald Reagan's party, but that's another another day, another thing, right? doesn't matter. This is not conservative. This is not people that believe in the country, which is made up of the people. This is about otherizing. This is about selecting a target, picking an enemy, and deciding that retribution must be gotten. And I know a lot of you enjoy that feeling because you have been put out. You have been ignored. But you will not be attended to by this branch 
by this side of the coin, by this wing of the crooked bird that cannot take flight any longer. You must understand, this is not the Republican Party. This is the Trump Party. And if you're with it, own it. It's Orange Jesus. It's Hulk Hogan. It's not Mike Pompeo. It's not protecting Americans. It's protecting American interests. See the definition on that one and pay close attention. Joe, what are your thoughts? Well, now I'm going to go back to Hulk Hogan since you mentioned him again. He kept saying real American this, real American that. There's no such thing, Terry. There's no such thing as a real American. We're just a bunch of human beings that just happen to be born within the boundaries of a place that's called America. (laughs) And if you can stand up there on stage and say, if you don't believe what I believe, then you're not a real American. Then you're just an asshole. I don't care what flag you fly. Mm. The beauty of this all is, of course, that what Terry needs is Bubba the Love Sponge to come back and... Give his wife over to him, I think. That, that that might help. Or maybe he can, you know, yell racist stuff at his daughter. Maybe that'll help him. Or maybe he's just that kind of actor because he made a living doing it for so many years. He was an icon to a fake sport. Donald Trump is an icon to a fake ideology. That's correct. And that's what it is. And he belongs in the WWE Hall of Fame. Absolutely. Absolutely. No no question about it. I'd feel better if they ran Jesse Ventura. Mm-hmm. As would I. Where is Stone Cold Steve Austin when you need him to deliver some stunners? Right. That's all I got to say about this. Anyway, Joe, I think we're done for the evening. Because what else can you say about it that they haven't already said, that they haven't already proven? And on the other side... You have a, a people that are saying to you that we believe that our country is in jeopardy. They're doing absolutely nothing to change that. They're driving us into the ground. And you know what? You don't like being drowned in the muddy water. I'll tell you what. We'll take you out of there and we'll stick your head in a bucket over here. It's six of one, a half dozen of the other. And... It's all about the devil you know, and it's really about the devil in you. What are you supporting? You're supporting vengeance? You're supporting grievance? You don't even know what you really have a grievance about if you support this party. And I got to tell you, on the other side, it's so confused that it makes sense to me that, you know, It's time to defend the transgenders. It's time to defend the economic record while everybody's suffocating to death. It's time to defend the guy and tell people that he's perfectly viable when he's not. You know, what what, what is that old song, clowns to the left of me, jokers to the right? Here I am, stuck in the middle with you? That's right. Hey, I need to get stuck in the middle with you, too, while there's still roads between us that I can make it there on. Yeah. (laughs) I, I mean, I think I think that we are in an imminent danger and impending doom, and not because of what's going on on all this world stage, but because of the people's reaction to it. Well, see, that's the thing. Here's the funny part to it, is that these people are all actors. These people are all out there. They're performing a role. By the way, a role that you're asking them to perform, all of you. All of you, all of us, indeed, are asking them to be these fake athletes, just like in the WWE. That's you know, right. The real challenge, uh, Donald Trump was going to get his head shaved if, if Vince McMahon can beat him. Take a look at Vince McMahon, the way that guy was built. He's a lunatic. He was jacked up. He could have killed Donald Trump inside of five seconds. Uh, absolutely. But Donald Trump won awards for doing what? Faking a fight that he, of course, wins. And that's what he does. And he's still winning. Yep. I got to give it to him. He consistently with a straight face, believes that not only is he, you know, constantly under attack from people, people are unfair to him, but the greatest part of it is he believes he's entitled to all of the results he gets. His cases against him are going to disappear in the year of the lawsuit. 
He will be reinstalled unless something else drastic or crazy happens. Now, I don't know what's next. And I did not predict that Kamala was going to come in because I thought even they, the Democrats who love to form circular firing squads, would not be stupid enough to put a bricker in there like that. A clear tomato can, if you will. A a guaranteed somebody going to throw the fight. Uh, yeah. uh, a candidate like Kamala, who couldn't pull it off when she was trying to push Joe Biden on being the little black girl on the school bus while you were on the wrong side of the issue, Joe. <laughs> you squeak, know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of an old UFC fight because I was into the UFC for just a little, just for a minute. Okay. And I remember when Anderson Silva, who was arguably the best fighter in the world, maybe ever. Uh, I was not a fan, but I cannot deny his skills. Fought Forrest Griffin. Forrest Griffin, who took a beating on live TV from Stephen Bonner for the full amount of the fight and had to go to decision, took a beating, took one straight left hand from Anderson Silva, laid down on his back, got counted out, and then immediately stood up and ran out of the ring. Mm. Now, you tell me that fight wasn't thrown. Now, Forrest Griffin is Kamala Harris, Mm. and Trump is Anderson Silva. I mean, let's get honest, okay? Uh, The fact is that there was a a phenomena in real sport at one time, even though that's a rigged, crooked game, too. But there was a real sport called boxing at one point, and there was a guy named Mike Tyson who could destroy people inside of 90 seconds. But I promise you that when they decided to put him up against the white guy because they couldn't find Jerry Cooney, he was too old, and they went and got, I forget the guy's name, but they went and got this guy and they propped him up and he was going to be, you know, it it was like him or Razor Ruddick, which one? And they put the white guy in because it was going to make more money at the gate. Mm -hmm. His first name was Peter, right? Is this the one when Tyson first got out of prison? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I saw that. That guy wasn't right. Mm -hmm. After the the fight, he was swearing that Mike Tyson was one of his heroes when he was growing up. Yeah, right. He was was older than Mike Tyson. (laughs) Right. (laughs) But, see, that's the thing, is that even if they're punchy, they have the ability to fight still if they've been fighting a while. That guy, I don't know where he came from, and I don't know where he went afterwards. Me either. I've never heard of him again. I can't even remember his name. I think his first name was Peter. Yeah, I think so, too. But I just remember looking at him going, you know, if this is what people think white people are, I don't want to be white. I mean, you know, this is pathetic. And and props to Mike Tyson. He is my favorite heavyweight fighter in, of all time. Oh, he was a perfect weapon in the ring when he was young. I mean, look. You know, there, there's a certain point at which he snapped, too. But the thing is, I mean, you know, biting Evander Holyfield was a bit much. Yeah. But but that's where we're at. And notice that, you know, Evander Holyfield took more of a wound than, you know, Donald Trump did with that so-called. It wasn't a bullet. Get, get over that, too. Yeah. But anyway, the thing is, it wasn't a setup either, people. It wasn't. It was organic. That happened. It happened. It was a real thing. It was a failure of the Secret Service. You're damn right. Cheadle should have stepped down sooner, but didn't. She waited a little while. And they waited like a chess match, by the way, for the RNC to, to blow its, you know, to blow its uh, uh, stack, its, uh, you know, its load, if you will, on the RNC convention so that they wouldn't have the wind at their backs at that convention when Kamala was now handed the privilege of the, you know, delegates that Joe didn't even earn, actually. But that's okay. She can say she earned it just like Donald Trump said that his father only lent him a million dollars, even though it was more like $425 million that he funneled to him all throughout his life to give him his start as the real estate hustler from Queens. But anyway, I say this. Stay tuned. It's going to get more entertaining, but is it going to solve a damn thing for you, for me, for the true believer Boy Scouts out there, or even for the most wild-eyed, crazy conspiracy theorist? And and still, I can't understand AJ coming out saying there's been a coup against America. Because if he's concerned about a coup, the only person that stepped aside from anything is, guess what? Joe Biden. I thought he wasn't the legitimate president anyway, AJ. And, oh, what happened to your $100 million that you're supposed to pay off and you're supposed to be bankrupt and off the air? Oh, that's right. You have emergency broadcasting privileges on Elon Musk's. 
platform, who has many millions of dollars to give to Trump as well, while we spend billions of dollars that these people are raising from all kinds of people all across America in a time when most of the people I know can't afford to eat. But okay, I guess this is all real and consequential. At the end of the day, I think you're right, Joe, the thing you said at the top, which is very, very simple. No matter who wins, no matter who actually steps into that role, first of all, they're not the king, even if they think they are. But nonetheless, here is the guarantee. We are all actually the losers in this contest. 100%. Regular Joe, I'm going to stick and talk to you a little bit, but we're going off the air. So for those of you who listen to this hour and a half's worth of uh, discussion on the Ocelli effect, I finally let it out of my system. I couldn't help it. On Friday, it'll be about your opinion, so call in and give it to me on Friday night on the open mic, 319-527-5016. Write it down. And keep it handy for Friday night, because that's going to be the night that we talk about your opinion and your view on everything. But I got it out of my system. I'll have to let you guys vent, too, I guess. (laughs) But think it over, please, for yourself. Ocelli.com Radio Network. Ocelli.com. Go ahead, call it. Hey, I'm interested in the truth about the JFK assassination. Right. Well, what do you want to know? Judy Baker's wild claim. Oswald girlfriend. She knew Ruby and Barry. Cancer weapons. Really? I imagine I could claim I have four wheels. It doesn't make me a wagon, but okay. Oswald was on the kill team and trying to prevent the murder of John Kennedy. Come on now. Has a real effort on the JFK assassination book into her claims? Go to Amazon.com. Enter Judith Baker in her own words. You'll get results for a digital copy of a book where Walt Brown utilizes her own words and the known evidence in the case to get at, well, (laughs) a different perspective, let's say. You can get Judith Barry Baker in her own words from the author himself, signed if you request it, by contacting Dr. Brown at K-I-A-S-J-F-K at AOL.com. It's a fun book and it actually dissects the many, many fantastic claims. Judith Barry Baker in her own words. Thank you for all the great information. The War State by Michael Swanson explains the great national transformation that took place and put the Kennedy presidency in the context of the times and reveals never-before-published information about the Cuban Missile Crisis. President Kennedy would not have been assassinated if he had been president 200 years ago. His assassination took place in the context of the Cold War and the rise of the national security state. Before World War II, the United States was a continental republic. In the decade that followed, it became an imperial superpower. Generals such as Curtis LeMay not only wanted to invade Cuba, but knew that there were short-range missiles on the island armed with nuclear warheads that they could not destroy because they were on mobile launchers. Their invasion could have led to a third world war, and they wanted to go to war anyway. The War State by Michael Swanson reveals why and will show you what President Kennedy was up against. For more information, thewarstate.com. Does this world get you down? Are you living your bliss? Tired of therapies that don't offer you any real direction or answers? Did you know that Maria does personal life coaching sessions? Save thousands of therapy dollars and get the direction and answers you need to live an authentic life based on your own personal blueprint for this life. All this typically in just one private session with Maria, not countless hours on a couch. Maria combines her professional experience, life experience, and her heredity intuitive gifts to get you back on track. Email Maria today for an appointment at Maria at Maria.net. That's M-E-R-I-A at M-E-R-I-A dot net. Get on with the best life you can possibly have. Check out the other side of this happy, loving, passionate woman at www.MariaHeller.com and avail yourself of the best coaching around, all in the privacy of your home via the telephone. Gift yourself with yourself. Make an appointment today. Write Maria at Maria.net. In Denial, Secret Wars with Airstrikes and Tanks by Larry Hancock. Secret wars became a staple of U.S. covert operations and are still happening today. Larry Hancock's book, In Denial, rips the cover off many of them. Using new files, it exposes things about the Bay of Pigs that no one has ever written about before. It shows why it really failed and why the United States did not learn from it. It also shows why other countries today are doing secret operations with more success. 
This is the book that puts what some want to deny into the light. In denial, secret wars with airstrikes and tanks. Larry Hancock. For more information, go to Larry-Hancock.com. Pick up your copy of In Denial at Amazon.com in digital or physical form. <laughs> Do you like history, real history, that you were never taught in schools? Why? The Vietnam War, nuclear bombs and nation building in Southeast Asia by author Mike Swanson with new documentation never seen before that will open your eyes to events that led up to this. Why? The Vietnam War, nuclear bombs and nation building in Southeast Asia, 1945 through 1961. Get your copy today at Amazon.com. Why? The Vietnam War by author Mike Swanson. Revelation through conversation.